Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Saskia from rawfreedom.co.uk and today I am interviewing the fabulous Sherry Clark. Hello Sherry. Hello Saskia, good to see you. Yeah, lovely to see you too. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with us today. My so, pleasure. Sherry, how do you describe your, what's your job description? Oh, you started with a hard one. Um, well, my title is health coach or health counselor, um, but what, the way I introduce myself when people ask is I typically say I'm a health coach and I'm host of a television show called Fork in the Road with Sherry Clark. Yeah, fantastic. I know that's so exciting that you actually, you're that, that out there in America they're making a, sh a show on, what is it, local television you're on or? It's local television right now, yes, um, although our goal is to go to greater heights. Um, and then we've got a half an hour slot on every week on Sundays on a local station. Yeah, amazing. And I've no doubt it will go national because raw food is just becoming more and more interesting to people in all walks of life. Well, exactly. I love that, that story that you, you were just telling me about the dinner lady, what we call the dinner lady, you call the lunch lady. Huh? Would you tell our viewers? Oh, absolutely. Well, the show is on weekly, and it's been, we're entering our second season. So, um, as a result, I've gotten a little bit of like local notoriety, and people that I don't know have started to recognize me in the supermarket. And I was in Whole Foods, and of course, I ran in not looking my best. You know, you just run in to pick something up real quick, and this woman approached me and said, "I know who you are." <laughs> I thought. Oh no, no you don't, you've mistaken me for someone else. Well, she, I wanted to be kind and so I had a conversation with her. As it turns out, she's a dinner lady or a lunch lady as we say here in the States. So she works at a Catholic school um, feeding the children and she asked me if I would come and do an in-service training for the other lunch ladies and I agreed to do that just because I was so touched. and we're making inroads. The whole point being we're, we're able to touch mainstream, mainstream America in this case, but it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I just think that's just amazing that somebody who certainly in the UK, you know, a lunch lady or a dinner lady would be somebody who's not necessarily considered terribly food conscious in, in terms of health. And actually they're, you know, but they're providing food for children. So it's like the most important kind of role really. Exactly. And she said to me, when you come and speak to us, will you make something for us to taste too? And I said, I can't go talk about food without bringing some, so of course. Fantastic. Brilliant. Okay, so Sherry, what I'd love to hear more about is how you first got into raw food. Um, well, probably like many of your viewers, I didn't start off just raw. I, I actually started my journey over 20 years ago. I became vegetarian. So for me, it was a gradual progression. It wasn't just an overnight decision to go raw. And I know that some people do that, but um, I started to go vegetarian because my father had died of a heart attack at a young age. I was told I had high cholesterol and that I would need to be on statin drugs the rest of my life. And that wasn't an acceptable option for me. So I asked my physician, do you think I can manage this ailment with diet or changing my lifestyle? And he said, no. <laughs> and I said, well, I'd like to try, and I'm going to try. And I went back in five months, and I had dropped my total points by significantly. So, But I was a junk food vegetarian. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't eat any animal products, but I sure ate a lot of crisps. So, um, you know, it, it was a, that progression like many of us experience. So I got progressively healthier, more interested in things. And in about 2006, I um, started learning about raw foods, started juicing. I went to a retreat at, in Arizona with Dr. Gabriel Cousins. He's got the Tree of Life. I'm sure you've heard of that. And I, went, I did a juice fast in 2006, and all of the people on the, that were at the fast were either raw fooders or interested in it. So there you have it. You're, I was just immersed. Yeah, and and kind of it's like once 
once it gets you, it gets you raw food, doesn't it? It's like even if sometimes you kind of find yourself going off the path for a while, you always come back to it because you feel so great. Exactly. And going off the path for me, it, it, since 2006 is, is a while, I mean it's not been quite 10 years, but it's been quite some time, when I do veer off, I know it's never for long and it's never severe. Um, it's not, and I always wonder why I did it. You know, and it's not about. It's not for me. It's not about being 100% raw, or it's not about dogma. It's about making the best choices you can at the moment that you're forced with making a choice. So, yeah. And do you have you found that over the years that you veer off less often or less severely? I do, and when I and the interesting thing is, less severely is probably the thing. Rather than getting cravings, my thing was nachos. I loved nachos, and so you know I would get I'd go off on some deep end and I'd feel the craving coming on, and I'd finally succumb to it. Usually on a weekend, but now if I eat, so to say, and I'm not even sure I even like to say that word, um, it would be more like oh I think I'll have you know some cooked vegetables or something. And and even that, I, I mean, I don't judge that. In the winter time in particular, we had a ter terribly severe winter. And sweet baked sweet potatoes tasted darn good. So I yeah. ate them. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think I love that, what you say about making the best choices that you can. And, and I think, uh, you know, once we start making good choices, it becomes easier and easier to make good choices. Right. Exactly. It's like the bad choices don't even become real options in your mind. When I look at a menu, if I go out with friends, there are some things that aren't even on my scope of consideration, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what is it that you love about raw food? Oh, probably, well, a couple things. One, the taste. Um, because as the longer you're raw, the more your palate develops and you need less um, aggrandizing of the food, you need less fancy things, like something perfectly, we have asparagus in season right now and so and, and so asparagus in season, one, it's the least expensive it's ever going to be and two, it's the most delicious and so to just eat a, a raw asparagus spear to me 15 years ago, I would have thought, you're insane. Where's the hollandaise sauce? You know, where, where It's got to be in something. But now the, the beauty of that, that's the best part. And, yeah. and of course what you feel. When you eat something, I'm, I'm drinking, of course, my green juice. When you drink something like that, people who aren't raw don't understand that by the time I get done with that 32 ounce container of juice, I will be buzzing. Like the same buzzing that you used to get from Starbucks, but without the sweaty palms and and road rage. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of feeling really alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, energized and vibrant and happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that really I, really fascinates me is is the kind of knock on effect with raw food in terms of you know how it affects your wider life. So. Um, you know, eating more food makes us feel amazing, but also it tends to impact people's relationships as well. And uh, I'm curious to hear what you know, what you've kind of found with your with your relationships when eating this way. Um, well, the cool thing for me is, and and as a coach, it's not something I usually broach this topic with people. I wait for them to come to me with the topic, but I think that one of the relationships. That, that is affected is your relationship with the divine or spirit or all that is or whatever God, whatever you choose to, to call it, that you really become open and you really become um, sensitive to things and not just human forms but like um, like animals, like just way more in tune. Um, I'm definitely when I, especially when I'm when I do fasting in particular, I am way more in tune with people's emotions um, and what it is they're experiencing. And I'll be at, I'll ask more pointed questions and really get to the the crux of that. And part of it, I think, is because the barriers are gone. Um, it feels like you're really a little bit more raw, if you will. You're just out there exposed. And 
um, in a very positive way. And I, I know I can tell from your body language that it's an experience that you've had as well. And it's it's hard to convey to people who haven't had that beautiful experience. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember when I first went raw, literally within the first three or four weeks, you know, having having a real insight into um, you know, me and my boyfriend had a very tempestuous relationship and just realizing being so much more connected with what was really going on and just saying, oh, actually, this doesn't need to be something that is an argument. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't need to react in, a, in an obstructive way or, or an antagonistic way to this. It's just, oh. And, and that kind of clarity, that emotional clarity, spiritual clarity that you get from being really clean is just amazing. Yes, and I think what you're speaking to is you become more accommodating to other people. It's like when you feel good about your body, when your weight is where it needs to be, when you feel like you're toned and you're in good physical condition, you see you're more accepting of yourself and thus you can allow a greater amount of grace for others. Mm -hmm. So when you feel good and somebody says something that might strike you as being they're, they're being cantankerous or they are maybe a little out of line, Rather than be right, you want to understand. So you're a little bit more open and say, okay, I can see that what just happened bothers you. Can you tell me why? As opposed to maybe the old behavior would have been, well, if you think you're right, I'll show you what right really is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so what have you found most challenging on your journey with Raw? Hmm. I think, well, a couple of things. One is explaining to people when they want it to be, sometimes I just don't want to talk about what it is to be, I just, it's just what I've chosen to do. And like with my television show, um, we call it a lifestyle show. Every recipe, I do a recipe at the end of every, uh, of every show. There are three segments, and so I'll interview a guest, and I might take the viewer on a field trip, like to farmer's market, or we'll do something, and then I close with a fast, easy, healthy recipe. The recipes happen to be gluten-free, sugar-free, dairy-free, raw, vegan. But I never say, here's a, all those adjectives, I say, here's a healthy recipe. And if people don't know my personal dogma and know that I personally am raw vegan, they wouldn't catch on. But sometimes when people learn that you're raw vegan, that's all they want to talk about. And they, the, then of course, where do you get your protein? What about calcium? Doesn't that seem unhealthy? And there are times that I frankly get tired of it. You know, where I'm like, I, I, I'm just here for dinner tonight, folks. Could we? Maybe just do that. So that's been a little bit of a challenge. And it doesn't happen all the time. There are just times that it, it gets tedious. And I wish that people would listen to what they're saying. You know, when they're eating French fries and asking me, doesn't that seem a little unhealthy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. I think it um, triggers stuff for a lot of people, doesn't it, seeing people eat very healthily? Oh, absolutely. Because you're pointing out to them what they're not doing for themselves. And I'm not pointing it out. I'm simply being. And sometimes yeah. I would like to be. So that would be a challenge. Um, it used to be hard to travel, and um, but it's that's become much, much easier. Way back in when I decided to go to become raw in 2007, that that was the, the lifestyle I wanted to lead. Um, I was flying 100,000 miles a year domestically for my business and for work. And being in airports and being in small towns and whatever, it was difficult then. But um, you become a master at it. You learn how to pack. You learn how to shop. You learn what to bring. You learn that there are some things that you can compromise on, and there are some things that you, sometimes you go hungry. Sometimes it's just like, you know what, I'll just drink a bunch of water because I'll be home in a couple hours, and then I can deal with this. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I think, like as you say, it's... So much of it is about knowing what to do. I mean, I have quite a few people who come to me and say, I travel a lot for work. Can I do raw? And mm -hmm. and and it's it's just about kind of understanding, like knowing the little tips and tricks and like you say, what you can pack and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And planning ahead. Yeah, planning. That's it's like it's so important. The planning is just everything, isn't it? Key. Even in your own home, making sure you have you have the right stuff at home. Yes, exactly. And hopefully that you don't have the wrong stuff. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Get rid of it. I mean, it's, I, I had I had a quite an interesting experience a couple of nights ago where I was really craving some rubbish, and I was just going through my cupboards, and we don't have rubbish in our house. I was like, what, nothing? Oh. <laughs> I, mean, you want a, I don't know, a rice cake or a? <laughs> there was just nothing. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> I was like, I don't want a raw cracker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so I mean, just talking around your work, how, how have you found eating high raw has affected you within your business? Like, as a, as a business person, how does being raw benefit you? Well, um, it, the nice thing is, is there's not, sometimes I don't have to make decisions. If I go out to lunch with someone, um, I, there's, Half of the menu I don't even look at, so it's not on my my radar in my wheelhouse, and so so that part, kind of a thing. It's it's really it's not like there's a million choices. It's like, well, there certainly are a million choices. I could eat whatever I want. I can I can decide I'm going to have a burger tomorrow. I don't think that would be advisable, but I could. But the reality is, I've taken what what would have been the scope of you know, possibilities and narrow them down for myself and so that makes things easier. Um, I think, and then the things that we've talked about, the fact that I feel more alive, more in tune, my mental clarity is more there, I need less sleep. Um, I do yoga, I, have a, I go to a class, I get in my car and drive downtown, um, downtown Des Moines, Iowa um, at 5.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday and on Saturdays it's at 8. I get up at 4 in the morning because I do my wheatgrass first and I'll do some other things around the house. I journal or meditate. I'll check email. So and I typically go to bed between 10 and 11 at night, the night before. So that's not a lot of sleep, but I don't need a lot of sleep. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel sleep deprived. I wake up without an alarm or I set the alarm, but I'm usually awake before it goes off. So the big things are just really the energy and the clarity. Um, that would be the big things. Yeah, yeah. And what for you are, would you say, are the three most important staples for you in your raw food diet? Oh, wow. It varies. Um, and it varies because it varies by season. In the wintertime, in particular, I need more grounding foods. Um, and particularly, I, I'm learning a little bit about Ayurveda. I'm not. I'm certainly not an expert in that area. But with, with my dosha, um, I need some groundingness, and I get that. I love any kind of nut butter, any kind of nut butter, and I like blending nut butters. And I like. I'll eat it by the spoonful out of the jar. That's a good thing. So I've always got nut butter on hand. Um, I like I love seasonal vegetables, so that's why I say it depends on the season. Like this, if we opened up my refrigerator, I've always got leafy greens, always got some other green that's in season. Asparagus is in there now. When cucumbers are in season, you'll open up my refrigerator and they will fall out on you. Um, so that, and then I would say, well, I make I usually have something um, that's what I would call a carb, so it would be. Um, I like uh, raw onion bread. I make that all the time. I've got right now some raw corn chips that are good with guacamole, so they're kind of a Mexican flavor. So, because because I like crunch, so those would be the things. I you know, and I think most of us have nut milk on uh, that we make. But a lot of times, I don't want to use the nut milk bag. <laughs> I, I'm confessing, I'm sometimes lazy, so I make hemp milk because you don't have to strain it. So yeah, from the whole hemp seeds. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's beautiful. And I love the earthy flavor of it, and so I will. Like this morning, I splurged. It's Friday, and I made myself um, a matcha, matcha tea latte, and the and the milk that I used was hemp milk. So it was um, matcha tea powder, the dark the dark green powder, um, hemp seeds, vanilla that I make myself from scratch um, because it's really the best vanilla. It's just mm. too um, it's it's an organic vodka. And um, organic vanilla beans. That's how you make vodka, or that's how you make uh, vanilla, vanilla extract. And Fantastic. I did. Fantastic! I'm gonna try that. <laughs> it's so good. I did it on my television show. It's in one. Of, it's in uh, the first season. I showed how you make vanilla extract. It's so simple. And then um, a little tiny bit of honey. And I do eat. I do eat. Um, I'm a vegan, so I say. Yeah. And it's so good. And I, you put it in the blender and you mix it up so it's got 
of froth on the top. Delicious. Fabulous. That's gorgeous. I know whenever I speak to you, you more often than not, you've got a massive, great thing of juice going on. <laughs> also, and then over here, my this is um, some turmeric tea, and I've got the lid on it so that it, because it's it's in a tea bag and it's steeping, and it's got a little bit of cinnamon in it. So you know, I'm, I'll switch when I'm done with the juice to that. So I'm always drinking something, trying to stay hydrated. Yeah, and where and the, tell me about how juice fits into your life. Um, I juice every day. I uh, I juice 32 ounces every day, and I it varies by the time of day. My preference is to get it in before lunch, before the noon hour, because um, I think that that's the best time to do it. Plus, it's like for me, it's like exercise. I have to do first things first. I have to do the most important things first. If I do things that are less important, then the important things slide. So that's why I do yoga in the morning. I exercise in the morning, do juice in the morning, because in the afternoon, my life unravels. Um, so that would be, um, if I don't juice, it's unusual, and I may do a smoothie, but I'm not as big into smoothies as I am into juices, for no particular reason, really, just just for whatever. Do you know, what does, what does juice give you? Are you aware of... of of how it changes how you feel or how you look. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I can tell if I if I go on a little binge where I'm not juicing, a little kind of a hiatus, um, my skin changes for sure. It's drier, and I even notice it in photographs. And I can tell I can tell by looking at a picture of myself how um, how diligent I've been about not just what I do eat, but what I don't eat. Or drink. So, um, um, coffee. I like coffee, um, and I will drink coffee on occasion. I drink americanos, and I don't know if you have americanos. Just a couple of shots of espresso, watered down. Yeah. Um, but it's still coffee, and it's dehydrating. And if I get on a in a kick where I'm drinking a lot of it, I see it in my skin. So I would prefer not to do that. So, and plus, you know, it's it's an artificial energy. There's you're going to pay for it somewhere. Yeah, that's certainly, I mean, I, one of the things that I notice with juicing is this, my skin quality. And now as I'm getting older, I'm like, I, you know, my vanity is kicking in and I am juicing. You know, I, like you, I went through a bit of a hiatus recently and I was like, oh, my skin, what's happening? <laughs> Get me back on the juice. <laughs> and wheatgrass, I do, do you do wheatgrass? I don't do wheatgrass, no, I'm, I, I know it's incredibly good for you, but unfortunately I would, really don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely, it's either an acquired taste or it's one that you just never get used to. I grow my own, and I, and I actually, even more than grow my own, I make, I grow it on compost that I've created in my, I live in a home, so I have a yard, and so I grow compost, grow my own wheatgrass, and then I juice, I do three or four ounces every morning. Oh, amazing. Insane. It took a while to get to that, so I understand if you don't like the taste of it, you can tough it out and get to there, but it takes a while. So, um, but what I sometimes will put, you were talking about what made me think of this vanity and skin, I'll take the foam that's left at the bottom of the container if I'm going to be taking a shower and I put the wheatgrass foam on my face, let it dry and then we'll shower. But you got to make sure you get it all off or when you leave the house if you've got... <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Wheat, wheatgrass face mask. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. Brilliant. What what would be your top tip for people who are interested in being raw who sometimes struggle with it? Um I would do one is one is an emotional tip and um that would be um don't beat up on yourself and which is you kind of expect to hear but I guess I would say that I view life and particularly food issues as a continuum. And if on one end of the continuum, in my world, it's the standard American diet. Um, it's supersize me and can I have a shake with that? And it's all the things we know we shouldn't be eating. And on the other end of the spectrum would be somebody who eats so perfectly that they're annoying. 
and you don't want to be around them because they ask the server all of the questions that you're fine, you want to go, by the time you get done ordering your food, it will be time for breakfast. Or they're just, they make you feel judged. So that those two end of, ends of the spectrum, the, a person who wants to be healthier, if all they do is view their job is to make a little step closer to the end where you're annoying without ever getting to that point, then you can be a little kinder to yourself and say, I didn't do perfectly, but I did better than I did before. And that would be the most important. By keeping that perspective, then we do good things for ourselves. On, a, on the other side of that, though, for the rubber hits the road people who are less into the ethereal and more into the how do I make it work, damn it, I would say um, learn from the masters. Um, invest in uh, good books, invest in videos, watch programs like this one, and learn from those who came before you because we do give good advice and we have found shortcuts and tips and things that work and things that don't. Yeah, yeah, brilliant advice, fantastic, thank you very much. Fab, Sherry, well, we're nearly out of time, so if people want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Um, you would go to www.fork-road.com. That's my primary website. There's a Facebook page for Fork, Fork in the Road as well, and I hope that people will go there. I post a, um, a tip, at least one tip, often many more, every day. Um, sometimes it's a recipe, sometimes it's, it's a remedy for a, a simple ailment, whatever. Um, and while you're on my website, I hope that people will take a look at the video that I have that's for season one of my show. And it, Yay! And, it, yes. um, and so season one of Fork in the Road, which is also the name of my television show, is out. And um, inside is a... Um, I, can you see this? Yeah. Um, there are three um, discs, and there's a little... Um, pamphlet here that tells who my guests are and so um, and then on the website the recipes that I demo are um, downloadable so I hope that people will do that and um, and visit the site because I really want the the show to continue and it will only do that with viewer support yeah fantastic and on your DVD so you're doing you're doing interviews you're doing you're, you're doing something like going around a market showing people how to eat healthily and doing a fabulous vegan raw recipe yeah. I yes I and I've taken a friend to lunch and one one time I interviewed a yoga instructor I interviewed interviewed a physician and mm -hmm. and the questions that I asked were if you take pharmaceutical if you take prescription drugs because sometimes we have to mm -hmm. Does that ever affect your nutritional needs? And of course, the answer is yes. And she explained, and so that in itself is worth the price of the DVD. Mm. I have fabulous guests, so yeah. Fantastic! That is very, very exciting. Okay, everybody. So, so for everybody that's watching this, we're going to post all the links to Sherry's website and where you can get the video and her Facebook page below the this video. Um, and yeah, so that just leaves us to say goodbye, Sherry. So thank you so much Thanks. for being here today and for sharing for sharing your lovely, beautiful self. It's an honor to have been with you. Thank you. Okay, bye.